by removing some of that energy, it will um, alleviate just a lot of what's going on in terms of the low end frequencies. Now, just as a thought here, I always say uh, to my students, it's really important to figure out and define where your low end is coming from. Where, what is the instrument, what is the source of the low end? That becomes the focal point for the low end frequencies. You gotta remember low end frequencies are huge. Like uh, a 30 hertz wave needs 30 feet in order for it to complete the entire cycle that compression and rarefraction. If you're falling anywhere before that, you're not having the waveform fully complete, and uh, I mean, you're not really hearing it. What's really interesting is if you're in a nightclub and you're standing in front of the subwoofers, and that low end is hitting you, you're feeling it all over your body. It's massaging you almost, but your, your hearing can't really sort of make out what that sound is. It's, it's too close. Same thing with like when you're sitting in a car and you've got twin 18s blasting in the back. It's really the vibrations that you're feeling. It's not, you're not hearing that low end. And that's what we equate to low end frequency waves. Those, that, that big heavy bass sound comes from the feeling. People in cars, they could save their hearing by getting something called earth shakers or butt shakers. They're basically these transducers that vibrate with heavy bass tones, and you mount them to the chassis of your car or to the underside of the seats. So whenever the bass hits, it shakes the seats as if you had two 18s in the back of your car. You don't have to do that. You can, you know, get a normal stereo system, six by nines, you know, that pump out, you know, a decent range of sounds, and then put the earth shakers underneath it, and you'll feel like you've got twin 18s, but you won't be destroying your, your hearing in the process, which is kind of a cool thing. But uh, getting back into this, this idea, we need to pick where our low end is coming from. And I say you have to pick because if everything is generating low end frequencies, what you end up with is a really muddy, muddy mix towards when, you know, but your finished product, the base will not be clearly defined. And that's what we want. We want this big, fat, round base. We want to be able to hear it. We want to be able to feel it. And if everything else is sort of muddying that up, it becomes a real problem. So in this case, we're listening to our kick and our base. This, this track, the base, that sub bass is the driving force. So we wanna make sure that the kick doesn't interfere with it. We have to make sure that uh, these guys are playing nice with each other. Somewhere in that range, that sounds all right to me. Let me come back and play with it a little more. Now let's make sure our snare reverb I'm going to use a space designer because I kind of want to thicken up that snare a little bit um, with a different sound so I'm going to look there's a nice big fat percussion plate so it's got a nice tail on the end of that I'm gonna throw a little compressor on this, try and smooth it out a little bit. So while we're working with a compressor like this, we have to make sure that uh, we're gonna set this up correctly. Now, typically the way I set up a compressor, so I'll make my ratio as high as possible. I'll make my attack and my release as quickly as possible. And then I'll adjust my threshold so I'm getting about minus 12 in gain reduction. So this way I can really hear the compressor working.